Let us pray. Gracious loving God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for this opportunity to come before you. We give you thanks for the gift of your word. Uh, we give you thanks. You speak to us. And so God, guide us that we may be truly be your servants. In Jesus' most holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. Good evening, friends, and welcome to another weirdly scheduled edition of Scripture Talk. Um, mm -hmm. I am Pastor Trey Comstock. With me as ever is... Sister Brandy Dudley. Pastor Scott Ketcha. And on the ones and twos... Brother Stacy Tyler. Um, and yeah, so it turns out I forgot, totally forgot last week that I had like a pastor's retreat I had to go to um, in Nacogdoches um, with some of the worst internet I've had in a long time. Um, so I'm really glad I didn't try to do the show out there. We are going to be back on a normal schedule, uh, not next week, but the week after. Um, we, after this show, we're going to talk about what next week's show looks like because it's uh, Thanksgiving. Um, and I'll be on the road. We'll see. Anyways. Um, there will be a show next week. I just don't know what day yet. It's sure to be a turkey. Yeah, it'll be a real turkey. It'll be a turkey um, shoot. <laughs> yeah, something like that. But this is the show where we do the thing where we claim uh, to do. We're going to talk about uh, some scripture. scripture. And uh, we, we, we come, we gather here on a very special day um, in the life of the Christian year, one of the most under-celebrated holidays in the Christian year. Um, it's Christian, Christian New Year's Eve. Uh, we are coming up on Reign of the Christ the King Sunday, um, which this is like that super insidery baseball thing that ter technically, technically, Christian New Year is the first Sunday in Advent because uh -huh. we always begin the year um, leading, preparing for Christ's birth. Um, and actually, uh, specifically, we begin the year with the apocalypse. Um, so you have a lot to look forward to next week. Um, but for this Nothing week. Nothing says happy new birth like it's all coming it's all to an coming end. To it's an all end. coming. It's all coming to an end. Um, it's all coming to an end, and as we talked about last week or the week before, it's all coming to an end, and that's good news, friends. It's the um, end of the world as we know it, and, and I, I feel, feel fine. fine. Mm -hmm. That it. By the way, the message of Revelation, yeah. the book of Revelation, can be summed up in "It's the end of the world as I know it," and I, I feel, feel fine. fine. Assuming you're the one of the 144,000. If you're not, less fine. Anyways, our scripture this evening, not apocalyptic, just about Jesus getting killed. Um, it is uh, John chapter 18, uh, verses 33 through 37. It is Jesus' trial before Pilate. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own? Or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew. Um, your own, or uh, excuse me, I am, excuse me, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. Okay, pause. Peter tried. Jesus told him not to. Anyways, back in. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. Um, literally, cut the guy's ear. Um, but, as it, but as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so are you a king? Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this reason, I was born. And for this reason, I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to me um, excuse me, everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. So, I, you know, you got, I, you got to feel for Pilate here, right? Pilate, although he makes some really bad decisions, is trapped bef between a proverbial rock and a hard place. Like, he just doesn't, like, he's not fully in control, right? Because he's an occupying Roman force. And so at some point, there are still more people than there are Roman soldiers. And so he can't just do wildly unpopular things because he wants to, because he can't, it turns out in government, you just can't kill all the people, right? Um, so he can't do that. But at the same time, like, he has no idea what's going on. He's pretty sure he's being manipulated. Um, and he's trying, he's, he's somehow like looking at Jesus going, help me help you. Uh -huh. Help me help you. You say the right things. I say, I find no guilt with this guy. You deal with him. They say we can't kill him. And you go home to your mother and 
the disciple whom Jesus loved, <laughs> and Peter, who is currently a problem. Um, so pretty much, it's just going home to the Marys and John right now. Um, but you know, um, you know, it's nice to have friends. Um, and so, like, you feel like you feel for pa- Pilate, except. He proves that he has absolutely no guts at all, um, and he just go. He just allows himself to be manipulated because Jesus specifically won't say the words "I am not a king" because he is a king, but he's not a king in the way they're worried about, and he's certainly not a, a king in the way Pilate's worried about. And so it's a whole different kind of kingship thing. But Pilate's not going to buy into this. And another interesting thing on uh, Pilate is, you know, God's will would have been done. Jesus had to go to the cross. That was going to happen. Yes. Yet. It seems to be painted that there was an out for Pilate. Yes. You, I mean, it isn't just like he's sitting here having this conversation. It's not in this particular verse. But his wife had nightmares. His wife yeah, yeah. went to him and said, "Have n- gave him warning. Yeah, don't, and, like, don't, yo, don't, yo, dog. Don't, don't mess with this man. Yeah, have nothing to do with this man. <laughs> and like a foolish man, he did not listen to his wife in that area. Yeah. Maybe some way that's why he's kind of fishing for an out. Well, he's clearly not, fishing. Yeah, he's clearly fishing for an out, but yet he doesn't take the guts to say because it was his decision. No, I'm not going to do this. You'll have to find another way. He just leaves it as a oh well, I, I don't have a choice, and ultimately does this whole little wash my hands of it. But it's interesting in the midst of this that when he asks Jesus, "Are you a king?" We see, it reminds me of other times where Jesus is fishing out, like with the uh, rich young ruler. Yeah. Why do you say I'm good? Who do you say? Why do you say that? Right. So, are you asking me to know if I'm a king, or are you just Or who of, put you up to who this? Who puts you up to this? You know, it's just, are you coming to realization, or making Pilate think about uh-huh. why he's asking the question? It isn't that Jesus didn't know the answer, but getting Pilate to think about why am I asking this question? Or in other words, it's trying to get him to almost confess that, yeah... You are a king because when Jesus said, you're the one that keeps saying I'm, I'm the king, you know, I'm not telling you that. I, you know. you're, you're telling me that. So what are you trying to dig out of me, man? I mean, help well, him here. <laughs> well, but it's also like come to the realization, uh, you know, I, I think a lot of those kind of lines of questioning from Jesus are making them like, well, well, I would use, it's probably a little graphic, but I would use the phrase hang themselves, right? Uh Hoist themselves in their own petard, right? You give them, what I would, what I would talk about when I was a debater is giving them just enough rope to hang hang yourself with. Uh It's really dangerous when uh, your opponent in debate agrees with you, right? You know, oh yeah, totally. No, I agree with this. Extend the rope. Absolutely. I agree with this. Extend the rope. Who do you say that I am? Extend the rope. Uh Yeah. Do you say I'm a king? Extend the rope. Do you realize what you're doing? Yes, you do. Right. And certainly with the temple hierarchy. Right. Um, Where can you say that I've sinned? You say that I am. I am. Like, you know, making the point that, you know, you, you, you know, I am not just some random troublemaker. You clearly know I'm the son of God. You clearly know this is a problem. I'm just going to make as I, 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 in responding to your questions, I'm just going to make as obvious as possible to you and everyone else. You know what you're doing here. I, you know, I'm going to do what I'm going to do, but you are doing this because you know, I'm the son of God and I, and I, and I'm a problem for you or here is pilot. Yeah. You know, I am not, Clearly, I am not a king in the way that Rome would be worried about. Um, you know, this is a show trial. You're the one saying all these things. My kingdom's of this, not of this world. My friend, only one of my friends cut off a dude's ear and I put it back. Right? And we're not even sure that because I put the ear back, I'm not even sure that's a crime under Roman law. Right? I'm Jesus. I'm not a lawyer. And, and interesting enough, we we see another sim again. The similarities to the rich young ruler just amazes me. Um, of a almost but not quite, you know. They always say that you know close only counts in uh, horseshoes and hand grenades. Uh-huh. It definitely doesn't uh-huh. count in salvation. We see that we see Pilate. Well, it depends close. what you mean, but yes. Yeah, we see Pilate is close because later on he puts the plaque over him, the King of the Jews. Right. Yes. The temple hierarchy complains and says, "No, no, right? He claimed to be the King of the uh-huh. Jews." And, and he Pilate said, said well, no, I've written. No, I've written what, what I wrote. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And yeah. so he proclaimed him King of the Jews. But he didn't seem to then take the next step that we see anywhere of accepting that. Well, right, right, because because that at that at the moment that would have required guts, fundamentally yeah. a thing that Pilate doesn't have, right? Like this, you know. Again, P- 
Pilate's at a dangerous moment, but you know, this is not a sermon on leadership, but there's a great lesson in leadership here, right? Yeah. Um, of where Pilate is a terrible leader. Pilate has the has the power, actually has the power to prevent an injustice, right? Um, he is deciding to act like he doesn't have the power because it's convenient. And so you see that as the representative of the greatest earthly empire that has existed at that point, right? The representative of Rome. Yeah. Uh-huh. This like... You know, the way we talk about Pharaoh, Rome is even bigger than that, yeah. mm-hmm. right? Because Pharaoh ran, you know, ran a small swath mm-hmm. of the Nile and Rome ran the world, the known world at the time, right? Um, so the representative of Rome doesn't have the guts even just to say something unpopular. The ruler of all willingly sacrifices himself, right? And right. here's the difference, Right. This is this is about leadership because it's about who's the real king. In the yeah. same way that like this is this is parallel to Exodus. This is parallel to the battle. Exodus is actually mm-hmm. the battle between God and Pharaoh. There are a few things that whenever I leave this place, I want y'all to remember. And one of the things that I want you to remember is that Exodus is not a battle between Moses and Pharaoh. It is a battle between God and Pharaoh. Mm-hmm. And this is a battle between Jesus <clears throat> or God. This is a battle between God and Rome. Yeah. In the ring on behalf of God is Jesus. In this corner. <laughs> and in the other corner, on behalf of Rome, is Pilate. So I got a question. Uh-huh. Would you think, I'm speculating here, would you think that Pilate acknowledged Jesus as king when he wrote that sign on the cross? Yeah, but what like what does that mean? Right? Like and and how much is Pilate how much is Pilate trolling that devil, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, and and you go back to uh I uh, believe, believe it's in James where it says, you know, you say you believe in God. Great. The demons do that. Yeah, right. Yeah, they yeah. Shudder. Yeah. yeah. So just making the statement, you're, you're God, isn't the same as accepting him. And so it's that difference. I've heard it said that the the uh, greatest di- distance of keeping people from salvation is about 18 inches from the head yeah. to the heart. Uh-huh. It's not our literal yeah. heart, but it's that coming to a difference of having a mind knowledge of it and then truly accepting well, it. Well, and this is something that John Wesley reflects on a lot early in his life. Right. That John Wesley reaches this conclusion that he only believes in with God in God in his head. Right. Like he intellectually assents that God exists. And for a while he thinks that's okay. And this is what makes the like experience on Aldersgate such a big Aldersgate Street such a big deal, because he finally feels it in his heart. And this is also in some ways like what the book of Hebrews um that we have spent or I have spent a lot of time in um over the past six months is trying to lay out that faith is more than just, yeah, yeah, believe in that thing, right? Faith is a deep-seated commitment, right? And the thing that Pilate won't do, Pilate may well recognize there's something real weird going on with this dude, Mm -hmm. Um, but he is not willing um, for that to upend his life, right? In fact, it's the exact opposite. Um, He's going to just kill this guy um, because it's really convenient um, to just kill this guy, make him go away, thus showing that earthly powers are nothing um, in comparison to God because what God will do on behalf of the right thing is die, like willingly suffer and die, um, which is a heck of a difference. Um, uh, I suspect there are comments on this chat. I am not seeing. Uh, That's that's what I'm noticing. (gasps) It looks like it's kind of going, so I'm reaching out to some to see. Fantastic. Well... Hello, friends. I yes. ho- we we've turned down the wick on the on the bit rate so that it looks worse. Where there are fewer pixels to make up my stunningly beautiful face. Uh, <laughs> oh and we're God. definitely uh, not sponsored by Zito. We are definitely not sponsored by Zito. Um, I, we are borderline. We are borderline going to get a restraining order for Zito. Uh, the amount of time we have spent talking to them. But no, it, it is like we're doing this on Christ the King, Reign of Christ the King. Um, cause it is a scripture, not just where like it talks about how Jesus is King, but where Jesus shows what being a King, being a King, the way he means it works. This is what being a King like Jesus works versus Pilate, who is a coward. Mm-hmm. Very much so. Uh, he, he is given the unique position and interesting enough, he, he confesses, I have found no fault in this man. Yeah. It's a weird thing. One of the, so a lot of people if you're not into history, don't miss this whole thing about Herod and Pilate having an agreement about Jesus because Herod and Pilate didn't agree about anything at all. And it was shocking that they're, but wait, you didn't find any fault in him. I didn't find any fault in him. him. Wow. This is crazy. What do we do with him and Herod? I don't know. It's in your court. (laughs) It's not my fault. It's not my fault. (laughs) Do what you want to. Which, you know, and, 
it kind of makes me think about that verse. You know, if you're uh, you don't stand up for God in front of men, then Jesus might not stand up for you in front of the Father. Uh-huh. It's totally paraphrased there, but it's but it's hitting on that public confession, that willingness to have the guts to step out. Yeah, which is coming more and more in you know in, in face of cancel culture and sure. in today's society, uh, making stands about what Scripture says. Now, obviously, always in love and not taking the Bible to bash anybody or anyone. The Bible is not it's a weapon. Not what, it, what it's for? Not in that way. No, uh, it's a weapon against uh, princes, principalities. But that's for another show. But um, but it's not a weapon meant to yeah, use against your neighbor. It's to be used for love, and yeah. so a uh, stand up for love, stand up for justice, stand up for. Right is right, wrong is wrong, but yet even in the midst of that, there's forgiveness for all. Well, because Christ dies for Pilate. Yeah. Exactly. Right? Christ I mean, dies for Pilate. Now, yeah. no, we have no idea, you know, we, I guess we actually have some idea about Pilate's later life because he's a historical figure, but we have no idea if Pilate becomes a Christian. I suspect not, but Christ died for Pilate. Christ died for the temple hierarchy. Christ died for Barabbas. Right. By died died for Bar- yes, died for Barabbas. I mean, that's that's, 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 yeah. that's yeah. mind-blowing sometimes. When you think right. You realize this blood was for you. I know. You're literally like, taking your oh, place Oh, I like that. This blood's for you. Right. Yeah. But because I, I, you know, as a pastor, like we spend a lot of time talking about like Jesus died for you. And Jesus did die yeah. for you. Let's be clear. Like Jesus did die for you. Jesus died for all of us. But he rose again. And he rose again. But Jesus died for Pilate. Yeah. yeah. Right? That like Pilate has Pilate, who is instrumental in Jesus getting dead, um, who orders Jesus torture, orders Jesus to die. They could have killed him in a lot of ways. They didn't actually have to crucify him, right? You know, Pilate could have just stabbed him. Or, right? or, like, or flogged him before the 39 last Yeah, season. right, yeah. All <laughs> kinds of things. Um, so Pilate made Jesus' life a living hell. Um, and Jesus died for him. But I'm going to go back to what you said at the beginning about you feeling a little sorry for him? I do. Good, up to a point. I mean, even to the point that he's even made a, a spotlight in the Apostles' Creed that we yeah. say every Suffering under Pontius Pilate. Uh huh. And he tried his best to get Jesus bailed out of that. And he no, he, no, he didn't. Right. You, uh, that, that's the point. He didn't try his best. I mean, you know, as far as you know, make, make no, because words. he could have just said he could have just said no. He could have just said, "I'm not going to kill this guy." He, yeah. He's Pi- he's Pontius Pilate. He's a representative of Rome. He might as well be a god walking the earth. So. If he had done that, he would have lost all his prestige, all his... Oh, they would have killed him too, probably. No, they couldn't have killed him. They could have... It would have hurt him. It would have hurt him, right? <laughs> yeah. But, like, yeah. St- making... You know, standing up for what's right, as, as Scott was talking about, right, could be painful. Oh, yeah. I don't think he tried his best. I think he oh. wanted... To be able for Jesus to give him the exact right phrase that he could then go, it's fine. Yeah, you know. Give me something I can no, use. Right, but that's still that's a coward's right. way out. Because yeah. he could have just. To me, to me, right. to me it's <clears throat> Pilate, like, he goes, he made, he made sure that everybody knew my, my hands are washed of this. You guys are the ones that are making the decision what happens to him and how we deal with it and everything. But at the same time, like you said earlier, he wants Jesus gone. Yeah. So, I mean, he's like, no, he, he's he's basically going, okay, I'm getting what I so want. He's indifferent. So he's indifferent. He's indifferent whether Jesus lives or dies. The temple isn't indifferent. The temple wants Jesus dead. Right. Um, and Pilate... Um, life goes easier if the t- if him and the temple get along. Well, well here, here's another thing that's going on for Pilate. You know, they're starting to make a big stir about Jesus. Yeah. If there's an uprising, when there's an uprising, and if the proletariat is that the right way of saying it? Anyway, the people in Pilate's proletariat, position, proletariat, yeah. proletariat. That's what I'm trying to think of. Does not handle the situation. Rome sends in the fixers. Right. Uh, and which it would include. Fixing the broken proletariat for yeah. not having handled the situation. Yeah. So there is some self preservation. So you don't want the, the fixers coming in. There's def, but I, I you know, I, 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 I suspect. Hey, we do have a, one, one of the comments got through. Pilot said, Not my monkey, not my circus. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, he does. But it, like, exactly. yes. But exactly. also, like, Anytime we talk about the death of Jesus, and particularly about the powers of it, let's, re- let's remember how strange it is that the temple is working with Rome. Right? Right? The temple. Yeah. 
and Rome should be bitter enemies, right? Because you know what Rome's doing? Running God's country. You want to know who's supposed to be running God's country? The house of David. You don't want to know what the temple hierarchy did? They conspired with Rome to make sure that the house of David was not ruling God's country. Right, and so this is this is like, you know, we talked about what you know, was that? I don't know. I've sl- I've barely slept since uh, when we talked. Because yeah, it was this past two weeks ago. When did we talk about the temple getting destroyed? It was very recently. Was that last week? Was that last week? I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't know. Recently, we talked about the temple getting destroyed. It seems such a long time ago. It was Sunday, Trey. It was Sunday. Well, dude, I have been in a. I know. Been in a conference for three days. I have not. So and you I was, were out of your element because you were over at Springfield, so it kind of threw you. Yeah, it threw me to, off. Yeah. I, you know. Anyways, we recently talked about the destruction of the temple. You want to, and we mentioned this, or certainly I did, in why the temple needed to get destroyed. Why the temple needed to get destroyed is the people running the temple conspired with Pilate, conspired with Rome to keep Rome in power and kill Jesus. Right. Yeah. The temple, like. I understand that we tell the story that the temple and Jesus are at loggerheads the whole time, but naturally they shouldn't be because the temple is the throne of God. Hello. And who is God? Jesus. Yeah. Da, da. And uh, it, it it literally was uh, the temple had come to take the place. I mean, they would make yes. uh, oaths on the temple. Yeah. and uh, <laughs> which, is, I, which is what the Ten Commandments are actually talking about. Yeah. Don't. Do this. Don't do that. Don't okay, do it. Okay, we will not, God. And I swear by the temple we won't. Ah, ah, yes. No. <laughs> so close. So close. No. <laughs> Epic fail. And uh, all of this contrasts with Christ, yeah. who willingly died, who understands that his kingdom is not of this world. Uh-huh. And so that he is, you know, he's, you know, blood is not going to be shed on his behalf other than that one dude's ear. Shout outs to ear guy. Um, other than that guy, no one's blood's getting shed because this is about this is about sealing a greater kingdom than any of these fools can imagine. Mm-hmm. And what it takes is Christ's sacrifice, and he willingly does it. And what Jesus Jesus puts Pilate in the position that we all find ourselves at yeah. some point. Here I am. What this do you This is do? who I am. Yeah. Who do you say I am? What are you going to do with me? Right. What are you going to do about it? You are a king. So you are a king. I mean, yeah. yes and no. This is one of those like, you know, Jesus is really, you know, never play 20 questions with Jesus, right? Are you a king? Yes and no. Um, who do you say that I am? So the rules of Jesus, Jesus, it is 20 questions. I ask you, are you uh, bigger than a bread box? And you say yes or you say no. And then we decide if you're a chicken, right? Like, come on, <laughs> Jesus, just play the game. And he's not. <laughs> Or, or, or Jesus' favorite. Let me ask you a question. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. If you can answer my question, then I'll be more than glad to answer yours. Can you imagine? And nobody can ever answer question. Can you imagine question. Jesus on Meet the Press, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Or even better. The ratings uh, would go up. Wel- <laughs> welcome. Welcome, everybody, here to Athens. We have a riveting uh, thing up today. Socrates will be uh, interviewing yeah. Jesus. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, Actually, we just did. Uh, we did Paul um, um, at the Areopolis tonight. Now, that being said, there is a book. If I can, it's out of print. If I can ever get my hands on it, uh, I want it. It is an awesome book, but it it is a fictional book. But it is called Socrates Meets Jesus. Nice. And it goes through Socrates in a conversation with Jesus using the Socratic method, coming around to realizing who Jesus is. Interesting. I would. Be. That would be. It's a cool book. I, years ago, but it's had a print. I can't find another copy of it yet. Well, and, this, and like obviously, this is a Socratic conversation. Yeah. Right. Um. But, but this. But that's part of the like giving Pilate the rope to hang himself with. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Who do you say that I am? Like making again part of leading Pilate to that like. To express what's happening. Obviously, Jesus knows what's happening in his mind. He's Jesus. This is not a fair debate. Pilate was never going to win this thing. Right. Um, <laughs> Weirdly enough, this reminds me of a uh, of lyric from an Eminem song. And Eminem says, why be a king when you can be a god? Yeah. I mean, in, in some ways, that is, you know, in some ways, that is what Jesus is getting at that his a little bit of both really it's a little bit of both right mm-hmm. that like um because you know okay flashback to the old testament god really didn't want there to be a king right right like one of the messages in the samuels is like you don't really want this i mean 
I'll do it. But but you're going to hate it. Mm. They're going to tax you. They're going to take your children and make them die in wars. We can just have this thing where I'm your God. You're my people. I got a prophet. Boom. And the people go, no, 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 nah, no. We, we want to be king. like the other. We want, we want right, we want a king. We want a king. We want a king. And so God. And they get Saul. And God. Yeah, and then they get Saul. But like God, who even God loves David. God uses the, some of the godly kings. Some of the kings are utter garbage fires. Mm-hmm. Um, just flaming garbage fires. You know, but then you got your Josiahs and your Hezekiahs and your Josiahs and your Hezekiahs. <laughs> There yeah. are a few others. Da- David was borderline. David was borderline. I mean, Solomon was borderline. I mean, he, uh, yeah, was da- borderline. David just had that uh, heart that would keep going back to God, which is the lesson in why he's a right. man after God's own heart. Uh-huh, uh-huh. We are supposed to be. Not that we're like God, but we are literally chasing God. Chasing God. God. Yeah, yeah, chasing God. So, like, God used the kings, yes. Um, but God really didn't want there to be a king. And so Jesus is that reset of... God goes back to directly being the king. Rather than having an earthly king in the traditional sense where it's like an earthly, fallible human, um, Jesus is the ultimate king because it goes back to what it was always meant to be literally from the beginning. That is, God is the directly the ruler of our lives um, and we don't need an earthly king. King of kings, the Lord of lords, baby. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And, that's probably as good a place as any to bring this show in for a landing. Yeah. Um, this seems on the technical end. I've been watching it. Other than chat not working, which I don't know what's up with that. We need to figure that one out. Yeah, that's um, an important piece. It that's an important work. piece. But thank you for the live audience that did stick with us. Um, it looks like there are fewer drop frames. Um, yeah, we're about at 66. Oh, that's like less than half. Like It's like a fifth of what we had last time we right. did this. Mm-hmm. Oh. Hello, Trees Dad. Hello, yes. Hi, Trees Dad. Um, if you want to invest in the infrastructure of Palestine, Texas, boy, do I have a deal for you. Um, anyways, uh, we, there will be a show next week. Um, I suspect it will be Tuesday night, um, but we need to confer briefly um, before that happens. I'm on the road. Uh, I'll still be driving to um, the East Coast Monday. Um, and so, anyways, there will be a show. Fear not. But if you have feedback for this show, um, you can post a comment here on Facebook. We think we'll see it. Um, you can uh, post a comment <laughs> over our YouTube channel. Uh, you can uh, post a comment on our website, uh, palestinegrace.com slash videos. You can send us an email, gracechurchpalestine at gmail.com. If you're looking for an audio-only version of the show because the bit rate has just gotten too bad, and you just, you know, it's not even worth looking at us anymore. I feel you. Um, you can uh, search the Scripture Talk by Grace Church in your podcatcher of choice. But we will be back uh, next week, uh, most likely uh, Tuesday evening sometime. But before all of that, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Um, and fear not. Stay well. God is with us. This was less cursed. The last In the Dark episode we did, I would describe as cursed. We have seen the light. Yeah, it's shining off of Scott's forehead right now. <laughs> I brought the power of the Denhausen with me. He is a uh, shining bright, like GE. Yeah, just oh. like this camera makes me look like a skin color.